Okay, we are heading to Houston, Texas. So we are going to make our way into Texas. Looks like we're going to be going through a lot of other little towns. So we should be able to get those claimed. And we're going to start our journey of hitting all these places. We might even come over into New Mexico a couple times because we got to get a few of these uh, locations uh, discovered. <laughs> okay. So we got to go through New Mexico into Texas. It's 11.30. So it'll still be daylight, which is nice. But we will definitely have to stop a few times because it's going to be a long journey. We are delivering dumpsters. some periods where I throw some music in there and just kind of enjoy the scenery.
videos, it gives me a reason to want to make them. Uh, appreciate it. Everybody else that also watches, uh, if, if you get a chance, you know, if you don't comment or something, just, you know, if you don't like to comment, if anything, just say hi. I appreciate that too. But thank you, Chris, for making this game more enjoyable to, to play because I know at least one person is watching because you've been commenting and liking and liking the videos, so I really do appreciate that very much. into Texas since I got the DLC. So this will be interesting to see the area and stuff. So see the area and not have to be in the heat. <laughs> As you can see it says, what is that, 96 degrees out there? <laughs> can imagine I have my air conditioning in the truck set at 68. <laughs> Christmas and that was over video chat so we had a lot of snow this year so we didn't do any traveling so today will be be fun hopefully we can get some cards in or I'm gonna try to get the pontoon boat out I've got the pontoon boat in the lagoon and the water levels are pretty low right now so it's gonna be interesting getting it out of there but I want to try to get it out so we have it just in case if they want to go for a pontoon boat ride and my other cousin from Illinois is coming up and he's going to be wanting to use it also so get it out of there so he has it for messing around with too what it's like all of a sudden I got stopped for some reason
past the, the turn off. Santa Fe, that's would have where I would have been going if I would have kept going straight, which actually I don't know if the computer would actually even let me go straight.
police cars. <laughs> Cause a traffic jam. <laughs> it's like, why did they put the, the viewing spot to where it would block traffic? Okay, now I gotta try to get back over to the other side. So we're gonna do some more janky stuff. <laughs>
New Mexico. So I was going to Santa Fe. Too bad on that. Oh, it repairs are nothing. Yeah, might as well do it though. There's no gas pump where that one's at, but they're still making it look like you're gonna fill up. 
Oh, I'm coming in in the wrong direction. Oh well. Still weren't too bad. Still three quarters of a tank, so it wouldn't have been too horrible if we wouldn't have filled up. But might as well. We're here.
back in 96, 97, I think it was, 97, I had gotten a, an 89S10, and about six months after buying it, I got a letter in the mail for over a hundred dollars worth of parking tickets. Well, I had to go to, you know, court for it and stuff like that, but the thing is, the parking tickets was from, like, six months before I even owned the truck, which really stinks, because then I had to waste my time, go downtown, and take the, you know, the, I took the information and gave it to the attorney, and was just like, yeah, the, the parking tickets say they're from, say, March of 96, and I bought the truck in, you know, say, June of 97, so he's like, well, okay, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll take care of it, it's just the fact that they didn't have that in the records, that, yeah, the truck was sold, I had the title, why would they send me the ticket, but it just didn't make any sense, but it all worked itself out, which was cool. I had a Cavalier convertible, and I had put a uh, performance exhaust on it, so it was a little bit louder. Well, I was, the, I had just had it put on, and it was an hour after I had put it on, and I was pulling up just a little bit of an incline, and there was a state trooper, I won't say what state, parked next to me. Or on the, the, at the stop sign and I came around the corner to go up and, and they threw on their lights and followed me until I was stopping to get some something to eat at like a Dairy Queen or something like that he gave me a, a ticket for a loud exhaust well I had, <laughs> I had the receipt on my seat I'm like I just had this thing put on and he gave me a ticket for something I just had put on legally it's like the shop a reputable, you know, place, business, and they put the exhaust on there for me and all this, and, uh, they tried to give me the ticket, so I went to the local police, because this was a state trooper, I went to the local station, and I showed them the ticket, I was like, how is this, probably? so then the officer came out, and he was like, rev the engine, and I was like, I was revving, he said, oh no, rev it, really rev it, so I was like, I am, I'm revving, he's like, my private car's louder than that. He said, well, they're just out for their quota. The state trooper is out for his quota this month. So he said, meet me at court when your appointment is, and I will, you know, I'll talk to the judge for you. So I was like, it was so cool. So I, I went into the, I had to go to court, and I was, I was just getting ready to leave that next day for vacation, so I was like, I had to get this done, like, now. So I go in and I told the officer who in the he came over to me and he was like, Yeah, the judge said he would have the, the officer didn't show up, the state trooper didn't even show up. He said, Well that was a waste of time. He said if the officer would have actually showed up, he probably would have disciplined him for it. So I was like, Well, as long as it's cleared up, I'm okay with it and stuff, so Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> I just love it how the how the officer was like my private car's louder than that. I don't know what he was thinking of. I was like, well, it was probably because he had his window down. I was pulling around a corner with a little bit of an incline. He was stopped, and my exhaust pipe was probably right in, the, right in his window. And he must have been having a bad day or something, too. But we all have those. <laughs> we all have bad days. But, yeah, it's interesting. have any interesting stories, feel free to share them in the comments. Don't share anything that might get yourself in trouble, so <laughs> if it's a, an honest or funny, you know, car story, let me know. Really, oh yeah, I used to drive around going 150 miles an hour all the time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, not something like that, because you never know. Oh, shoot. <laughs> well, I 
that there was nobody next to me. So busy talking, I kind of lost track of where I was at. But you make 
a lot less. It just didn't, didn't really feel like it was made much sense <laughs> to me at least. It's like you should at least make your full amount. Well, now I'm kind of confused. I got thrown off when I got stuck. And that was a long time ago. <laughs> My memory's not as good as it used to be. Back in uh, 2014, I think it was, I was doing, uh, I was uh, managing farms, bee, um, beekeeping operation. And I was putting uh, fences up for the for put up winter fences, you know, those green posts that you put into the ground, then you put the fence on it. Um, I was putting one of those up, and I was using one of those post hole diggers, and I was pounding the posts into the ground. Well, the, the end of the post was actually on a rock or something, because when I hit down, the post hole digger actually just bounced off of the the, hole, the post and the heavy hole puncher hit me right in the top of the head and it gave me a concussion or not a concussion, the doctor said it was whiplash as it jerked my head back I had to have, uh, I was bleeding out, it was in my bee suit at the time so I had the veil up so I had a big blood spot on the top of my my brand new veil It took me to the hospital. I didn't, I didn't pass out or anything. I was still conscious the whole time, but I had a severe headache for six months. It was like migraine-style headaches for six months. And whiplash my back. My neck was so bad I couldn't like do any lifting or really stand on my feet very long. Plus, it took me quite a long time, a couple years, to actually not... Sometimes I still catch myself, but... Um, slurring, kind of slurring my words and, you know, really got to really had to concentrate on what I wanted to say so I could get it you know, like, out. Well, that was interesting. I had, like, I went to a whole bunch of different doctors and there was, like, seven different nurses or something that I talked to and they were like, oh, you're lucky to be alive. I'm like, oh, that's... Thank you. <laughs> like 
your paint wash removals, um, sprays, and stuff like that. Um, it's mostly my knowledge of how bees and wasps uh, act that it makes so I can um, predict where they're at and able to remove them fairly easily. But without the overhead, it makes running that business so much more profitable than doing the honey because well you go with the honey route one it was going to be like five hundred thousand dollars to to go commercial for the amount of bees i would need the equipment i would need the trucks the, the facilities and things like that was, i had my business plan all worked up and stuff and i saw that i was like yeah it's going to take a lot of honey to pay that back you know <laughs> i was like so that's not really worth it you know um, plus, if you're depending on nature being, you know, like, nice to you. And with the colony collapse disorder, it would not be profitable to have to replace all of your bees, like, every year. Because they all die off on you. And they usually, oh, well, back in the early 90s, or in the mid-90s, it was like, the bees would a lot of honey. I, I was pulling 200 pounds of honey off of each hive and that was within you know the second season or the, I even have had even pulled honey in the first season on some of the hives but recent years the all the chemicals the neonicotinoid sprays they spray on crops now killing the bees um, so many things against them I don't know how anybody can sustain like a viable honey operation, you know, without at least like 10,000 hives or something like that. Well, a couple thousand. Um, I was looking at like three to 500 hives and that would make an okay living, you know, but you would be in such debt and you would be paying that off for so many years. And that doesn't include your, like I said, your losses and your, you know, equipment breakdowns and, and stuff like that. And you'd have to pay a rent on your facility that your honey operation is based out of for extracting and storing in boxes and stuff like that. So that's that's a monthly plus the rent on your trucks and your, your um, payments for trucks and things like that. So I went with, you know, I bought a truck with the bee and wasp removal. I bought a truck and I paid, it was a five year loan for the truck. I paid it off in two and a half or three. And, you know, I don't live extravagantly. I live comfortably. I have fun and, and I don't have to work year-round. I just, I work in August, make enough money, pay my bills, pay off my credit cards that I, you know, I pay all my bills with my credit card during the winter, and then when it comes to the next season, I, money I make, I take and I pay off all the credit cards, and I start, start the cycle again, which is fun. It's, you know, and then I'm able to be where you see my my nature videos is where I live the rest of the year. Hopefully get the this channel to the point where I can I can make enough money to making videos and never have to do the bee and wasp removal side of it because my you know as I get older my I don't recover from from doing that. You know, you're you're a carpenter, you're you know doing it and you've got thousands of bees or wasps trying to sting you and you're constantly lifting heavy stuff and you're taking buildings apart and putting them back together so it's rough on the back and the knees so hopefully I can get this the fact that you're watching and you're hearing me talk about this you know I appreciate it so much that this is helping me get to that part of my dream of making this full-time job making videos. Ah, Lone Star today. I've already went 
through three towns in Lone Star State. I didn't even realize I was in Texas. <laughs> but I've already hit three, three towns in it, so we get pretty close to our drop off. Not too much farther, I wouldn't think. Well, maybe we might still be like only three quarters of the way, halfway.
guys, he like dis disappeared for a long time, and then all of a sudden he came back and he was in a wheelchair because he got to a he was in a gang shooting or something like that. He got a drive by or something. It's like you know. <laughs> in my freshman year, it was like I, everybody around me, like in my science class, I think it was, they were, they were all asking me, so, well, so what gang are you in? I'm like, well, I'm not in a gang. And they're like, really? I don't know anybody that's not in a gang. I'm like, oh, that's great. <laughs> 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 like my I came from a Lutheran school, so it was, it was a great, great school to be in. And plus, the <laughs> once I got into high school, the, the, the um, school I went to, they were always so much homework and really hard studies and stuff. And when I got into high school, it was like a breeze compared to what it was. It's like I never had homework because I finished it all at school because I already you know, had had a lot of hard work and stuff, and I didn't really, didn't, wasn't as difficult as it was in grade school, which was nice, because my grade school was from kindergarten through, or preschool, but I was, I started kindergarten through um, eighth grade, and then ninth grade through twelfth was at the high school. That's one thing that was pretty cool with high school. It was, it was easier. And then my senior year was really nice because then I, I had enough credits to where I only, I only had to go to school until 11.42. Which that was like, that made senior year so much better. I didn't have to be there. <laughs> I was never a fan of school. Because I got, like I said, uh, I've got dyslexia, so it's like, it was always so hard. That's why when I decided I went back to college, I didn't go back to college until I was, what, 30? What year was it? 2008. Uh, I'm trying to remember what, how old I was at that time, but I know I was, I was older. And the only reason I was able to go back is I, I went for heating and air conditioning, and I was able to go to a counselor and find out, you know, they actually did it. They did tests for me when I was younger, but they never, I, I always did so much better in those situations, like, to where they couldn't really determine what I had, but then once I was in college, I went and met with the counselor and stuff like that, and they determined my, that I had, you know, not able to, my memory is bad, and my word comprehension between reading and, and stuff is not great. If I read it, I have a hard time. If somebody reads it to me, I can pretty much ace it. Which, that was nice, as they would, literally, they had a counselor that would read the test to me, and then I would answer. And it just, I was able to pass with high credits. I got certified heating and air conditioning. Kidding. How many times are they going to have me pull over for these? It's like it's the third time I've had to pull over for a waste station. It's all on the same highway. <laughs> Isn't it weird? Like, jeez. They should communicate better between each of these stations.
quick gas consumption on. I sh probably should.
here's the delivery point. Made it with only needing to sleep one time. Long delivery. Yes, yes, get that screen off there so I know where I'm turning. see where they want us to park. Uh, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm just gonna let them park it. Okay, excellent. Wow. That's the longest drive I've had in quite a while. 1,153 miles. Took 1 hour and 15 minutes. 157 gallons. 138 jobs. So that got me quite a bit of XP, the 2,300 XP on that. Made 680, six six thousand eight hundred and seventy two dollars And then we will have to find somewhere to sleep. I probably won't film that in the next episode. I'll just go sleep and then I'll start the episode. Okay. Well, thank you so much for watching. As you can tell, I'm starting to lose my voice. <laughs> um, have a great rest of your day, and I will talk to you in the comments.